Um, uh, my first comment is if I um, only knew about cancer registration from the two talks that I've heard, both of them very, very good, but both of them very, very positive, I would think that we don't need to do very much um, in order to um, assist the development of cancer registration in Asia. However, I have a great deal of experience on the ground um, in many of the countries that they've talked about, and I'm afraid that the situation is not as positive as um, we would all hope. Um, are we going to get the slides? We can see your slides now, but you, you can ask uh, to, you yeah, know, to... I need to see the slides so I can move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah just a second. Yeah, the reason why I'm basically talking about cancer registration is because Max Parkin got me involved many, many years ago in uh, 2000. Um, and subsequently, because I was the chief editor and the coordinator for the Asian Pacific Organization for Cancer Prevention, um, because of my involvement in the Eurasian Institute for Cancer Research, which Anton was also involved in, um, unfortunately, it hasn't taken off as we would have wished. APOCB has not done quite what we had hoped. And the last um, organization that I've been recently more involved with is the ASEAN, Southeast Asian um, Cancer Epidemiology Research Group. And that, unfortunately, also is has basically been put into hibernation during the um, lockdown of all of the countries. Um, so, unfortunately, although I would like to be much more positive, um, my experience with these three uh, organizations would suggest that um, we still need a great deal of effort in order to convince the countries, the governments of many of the countries, of the necessity of the advantages that will accrue from development of high quality registration. What do I do, Anton? I can't see any slides. Uh, can you open your... Um, just a second. Uh, um, if, you, if you see all the videos, uh, if you see all the participants, there's one particip participant with the name Studio... Uh, uh, Studio, switch to color review? Yeah, and you can see yourself and the slide there. Oh, I can slide here now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. if, you op if you open it, um, like... Full screen, then um, you can, can use I it. Full screen? No, can I no, 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 no. You can just ask and they will uh, change the slides. Well, anyway, we've moved on to the second um, slide. Um, and basically, this is just to um, affirm that um, what Freddie's already said that the in most of the countries of Asia, um, we have an increasing burden of cancer. Um, uh, you can see from this slide that there are only three countries, um, Yemen, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, which have more than 25% of the premature, that's between the ages of 30 and 90 deaths, which are due to infectious disease. Basically, in most of the countries, um, we have a very large burden due to uh, basically heart disease, etc. But um, in places like Japan and in Korea, you have more than 20, you have more cancers than you have um, these uh, heart diseases. And therefore, we hope that also, as in Europe, we will see in the future a decrease in uh, these type of um, these other NCDs um, relative to um, cancer. We also will hope that we will have a decrease overall. Um, but at the moment, um, we still have a um, high burden which we need to address. So could I have the next slide, please? And Don, can you organize that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we are really dependent very much on the guesstimates which are provided by Globacan, not guesstimates, of course, for the high quality registry countries, but for many of the countries of, of Asia, um, we still need to um, do a great deal of work. But nevertheless, we have a basic idea, and you can look at the global current data for 2018, published by Freddie, etc. Um, and for the instance, we see that we have much lower incidences in the Asian countries, including uh, the ex-USSR, uh, than we do in Europe. But um, uh, the picture in Korea is, I think, indicative of the way that in future, what will occur is that we will have 
far more and more um, cancers. And most of the uh, countries, of course, because they do not have high quality registration, are under underestimating their burden by a large extent. However, if we look at the mortality, then unfortunately, then we see that um, relative to many of the high instance countries of Europe, um, uh, we are facing a much greater challenge, for example, in China, in Mongolia. Um, and of course, this will depend to a very large extent on the types of cancers, liver cancer, of course, and lung cancer has been uh, very, very poor prognosis, and therefore the uh, associated mortality would be much higher. But I think overall, we still have a, um, a major problem with our um, uh, mortality, uh, how, how we can address the problems to bring down mortality. Um, of course, we need to have high quality data. Next slide, please. And for the high quality data, we need our population based cancer registries. Um, I was interested to see um, Ariana's slide. Um, uh, she gives Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan and uh, Kyrgyzstan and uh, Egypt PBCRs. They do not exist, as far as I can tell. And I was, I have visited um, Kyrgyzstan ten times. I've been in Kazakhstan ten times. I've been in Egypt five times, and I know that they did have possibility when Egypt was in the uh, the uh, Eastern Mediterranean Research Group with funding from the United States, then they had a registry in Tanta. It's gone. And it will not be resurrected, as far as I can tell, in the near future. She talks about um, Kyrgyzstan and our good friend, um, uh, who is in charge of the, the registry there in Chu. But unfortunately, because she has had a child, she was off work for three years. And I can almost guarantee that there will be nothing happens in those three years. I hope that, in fact, when you have your next uh, CI5, that, in fact, there will be an inclusion from Uzbekistan. But I visited Uzbekistan and I visited that registry. And I can see that there's going to be a, um, a long way that they're going to need far more support from the government and from the um, uh, the uh, powers that be, who are in fact the um, the clinicians, before we we'll go. But anyway, I I, the, I see this saw this slide for variation across Asia, and we are very um, we have very many different um, etiological factors. If we go to Japan, of course, we still have very many um, gastric cancer. Can, uh, gastric cancers, if we go to China, it's mostly lung. If we're in, Ch uh, in Thailand, it depends whether if you're in the north where you have lung or in the south where you have oral. Don't you have, of course, the necessity for our population-based population -based cancer registries at the local level in order to, to prevent, provide a, an accurate picture of the burden within the countries. So next slide, please. So we have to, we have to emphasize the development of population-based cancer registries. And here I um, show my appreciation of the present situation going on the basis of CI511. So we have a, um, a very uh, successful situation in, in Europe, of course, with almost half the countries, including many, many countries of Eastern Europe, which have 100% coverage with their cancer registry. Unfortunately, in Asia, that is only the case for South Korea for Singapore and for um, Brunei. Um, uh, we uh, see, of course, that in the, the last few years, China has come across, come, come alive. Um, I think in the last 25 years period, it's moved from five population-based countries is now 39. I kind of read my own slides because they're too small. But, but anyway, you can see that uh, you have success stories. You have a success in Japan, Korea, um, in uh, China and in India. India, you have a very, very well-organized and well-developed um, national program for cancer registration. So in terms of networking, this is working in individual countries like India, like China, like Japan, like Th Thailand, because Thailand has eight or nine population-based registries. Unfortunately, if you go south from there to um, Indonesia without... Um, you have a registry in Vietnam, which may shut down because of funding problems. We have a situation in the Philippines where we have two registries, which may, if the government um, 
goes ahead with its plans be subsumed within the um, ministry and therefore you will probably lose those. Um, there is the possibility now of the one registry that we have in, I'm sorry Freddie, I'm just being very, very uh, blunt, um, that you have the possibility there of loss of the only registry because you have retirement of a very active figure. I remember when I first met um, the lady who was in charge of the registry in Karachi, um, um, uh, that she basically emphasized to me that the problem that we all have is that we need to persuade our governments that registration is necessary. Thailand has got on board. The government is on board. I'm here in Thailand. I talk to the, the person who's in charge, and it's a very, very good success story. In Japan, they're now more successful because they're competing with Korea with its 100% coverage. We know that in China, they have the government is on board. But unless you can do the same for these other countries, then it's going to be an uphill battle. Um, sorry about that. Next, next slide, please. So I have recently been involved, and I mean, I've, I've just showed the, um, the situation in Southeast Asia. They, over the last 25 years, there really hasn't been any movement apart from in Thailand um, uh, in terms of the uh, registries which are of sufficiently high quality for inclusion in CI5. Now, we have registries that are, of course, um, with a lot of support from IR, have been trying to get their um, uh, population-based countries up and running, and Indonesia is a case in point. So I have been working with um, uh, the lady who's in charge of the registry in Chicago, um, and um, therefore I have access to their, their data. They have started registries, population-based registries in 14 of the provinces. And as you can see here, if you estimate the, um, uh, the global can estimate for males and females, if you look at the actual numbers of cases registered in the individual provinces, then you will see that something in the region of 60% of the provinces have less than 30%. So we've got about 130 for males and 130 for females. You've got about 30 to 40. So obviously, in this situation, then the, the data are not accurate enough for inclusion in CI5. It is going to be a long, long time before they can update data. The best place we can see is uh, Bali, which has about 70% of the um, figures which are estimated by, by global count. So that is a partial success story because they're up and they're, they're getting it going, but it's going to be um, a long time and they need a lot of support from the government before they will be able to reach the, the required level. Unfortunately, they have in the registry department in the, um, uh, the National Cancer Institute, um, they have seven staff for a country of 250 million. I mean, even if you only count these 14 provinces, basically you have far too few um, hands on the ground in order to be able to really effectively do the job. So we need to focus again on um, persuading the government to um, uh, get on board. Okay, next slide, please. So I think that um, um, obviously one of the major uh, factors uh, that we need to take into account is relative mortality. And here you can see that um, um, the, there are two publications that I've uh, accessed um, that you're seeing increases in breast cancer survival, um, especially in places like Singapore, but even in Thailand, etc. Um, um, but of course, with the cancers which are um, known to be have a very poor prognosis, like liver, like lung, then even in countries like Singapore, um, any advance, any improvement is relatively minor. Anyway, that's the situation there. I now want to go on to the um, uh, a comparison of uh, the incidence and mortality data, uh, partly for major cancers in Asia. Next slide, please. And the first one, of course, is oral cancer. Um, we know that um, oral cancer is particularly prevalent in uh, South Asia. Um, we also know that, of course, oral cancer is not oral cancer. Um, it's either lip cancer or it's um, one of the pharyngeal cancers, whether it's nasopharynx in, in China and partly in Thailand, or whether it's oropharynx or one of the other um, sites. Of course, these vary very, very much 
uh, depending upon the um, uh, the location and of course that is the risk factors we see here in the data for Belarus which has a relatively high um, incidence of um, oral cancer it's Larger or partly due to um, a large number of lip cancers. And I saw this also in the case of Australia, these lip cancers are, or skin cancers, which are caused by exposure or overexposure to sunlight. So we need to, of course, take this into account in our, um, our cancer registries. That's why I always try to um, emphasize the necessity for better pathology. And pathology, of course, um, requires also resources. You don't have the pathology in um, in Kyrgyzstan to be able to do any of the, the necessary um, work. You have to send the, the slack, they send the tissues abroad. So this needs to be also a comprehensive approach needs to be adopted. Okay. Um, uh, so and oral cancer, of course, is a relatively uh, poor survival. Anyway, next slide, please. We we'll go on to um, esophageal cancer, where we have a band of um, relatively high incidence stretching across from next slide please from um, Iran through um, to China um, but I must emphasize of course that these data are estimates for the entire countries but if you look at Turkey which here has a relatively low incidence of esophageal cancer if you go to the very east of the country as a room, um, then you will see that there is a very much higher incidence of esophageal cancer, which is very, very close to that in neighboring Iran, the neighboring Tabriz area of Iran. So that's why we need to, of course, focus in China. You see very, very high incidence, but in fact, many of the registries in, in Iran, in China, including Shanghai, have relatively low incidences. So again, this is just to emphasize the necessity for um, our local um, uh, population-based cancer registry. Um, and with the esophageal cancer case, of course, we have high cancers in Britain, uh, and we also have high cancers in Japan, but they're not the same cancers. They're squamous cell in Japan, and they're adenocarcinomas in England. So again, I just want to emphasize the need for the pathology support. Next slide, please. Gastric cancer, of course, is still very prevalent in um, uh, in the Far East, including Japan, Korea, and um, uh, China. Um, and from what uh, Freddie has said, uh, of course, the, the relatively high, uh, very poor prognosis well, means that, in fact, countries in, in for example, um, uh, Central Asia and uh, Eastern uh, Europe also have relatively high prevalence of um, mortality due to gastric cancer. Um, so, no, sorry, it's off your cancer. Next slide, please. No, I, haven't, I should have moved. They haven't moved the gastric cancer. Anton? Ah, okay. Um, actually, gastric cancer is going down. And so I'm using data from um, IAC, of course, um, to su suggest that um, obviously in many countries it's a decreasing for. Um, reasons of um, exposure to salt, etc. But in Japan and Korea, it's still maintaining relatively high levels. Next slide, please. Um, in the colorectal cancer case, we have um, a situation uh -huh, where we have the highest incidences, of course, in um, uh, the Western world, but also in Japan. And um, probably we will see from the um, data shown on the right um, upper um, graphs that, in fact, we have a, a, a relative increase in cold water cancer across the board, at least in, uh, across the board in Asia. So this will be a problem um, uh, in the future. We need to think in terms, of course, of introducing uh, screening programs. And this is something that countries like Thailand are now taking on board. Next slide, please. Um, the next slide, of course, lung cancer, um, as has already been um, emphasized, this is um, a major um, a result of um, presumably from a lot of a lot of student smoking. But uh, recent data from uh, many of the countries of Asia, uh, non-smoking females are also at relatively high risk of adenocarcinomas of the lung. And if you look at the two um, maps uh, in the far right corner, we have females and the far. And in the left, we have males. We can see that 
Uh, whereas um, in the male's case, um, we have a predominance of squamous cell carcinoma in some, but not all countries. In Japan, for example, we have a predominance of adenocarcinoma. In the female cancer cases, they're nearly all adenocarcinomas, and they are not necessarily um, due to tobacco exposure, although obviously there will be some percentage. This needs, of course, research, um, and for the research to be conducted, we need the population-based cancer registries. Next slide, please. Breast cancer on the cre increase everywhere. It's not anywhere near the level um, of incidence that we're seeing, the 100 per 100,000 that we see in most of the Western, um, uh, Western Europe. Um, but we can um, presumably, um, we, we can expect that in the future, if this is the cohort of it, that the um, incidences in um, Asia will increase because at the moment um, a lot of the, uh, the the peak in breast cancer incidence is in the 45, 50 um, age group as opposed to the 80, 85 um, in the uh, Western world. So um, we will expect breast cancer to increase very greatly in the future. So this kind of on, on the other hand, next slide please, will hopefully decrease and has been decreasing even in countries like India, where they don't have a screening program, not a population-based um, screening program we're having, because cervical cancer is, of course, um, partly due to um, uh, public health uh, facilities. Um, and um, hopefully that these will decrease. And especially with the advent of the vaccination, um, we hope that there will be decrease. But we can see that uh, um, there will um, still be a problem, of course, in contain uh, continuing to uh, to screen in order to. Hello. Uh, hello. Am I out of the time? Oi. Next slide, please. Yeah, you have you have still time. We have Parta here with us now. Yeah. So, so I'm just going to take the last few minutes on cancer networks. So the cancer registry is not only responsible for incidence and mortality data. It is also hopefully responsible for conducting research into epidemiology. And my experience has been with one particular registry in Kongen in northeast of Thailand with uh, Supani, um, Dr. Supani. And because of her activities, unfortunately cut short by her um, by Dermis last, last year, um, they have been very, very active in cancer epidemiology, looking at risk factors. They've been very, very active in um, basically uh, tobacco control and also in screening um, uh, programs because primarily because they started off a major cohort. And on the basis of the cohort, they've been able to conduct a lot, a large uh, number of um, uh, nested case controls for them. So the assessment of risk groups, the monitoring, the screening can all be done partly with the help of the cancer registry. And I would argue that is also the case for the clinical epidemiology, which we need to do in order to bring clinicians on board so that their support, which will be very important, may allow cancer registration to develop as it should. Next slide, please. So the, um, the situation worldwide, we have the International Association of Cancer Registries, very good, in um, basically based in Lyon, because they don't have sufficiently financial support in order to be independent of Lyon. Um, we have, of course, our North American um, uh, colleagues, and also in Europe, we have a very, very good um, uh, organization. But whether we can here in Asia um, reproduce such a um, um, effective organization is what we're going to talk about. Okay. Um, so we have, as uh, Freddie's already noted, and, and as um, Ariana has said, we have our hubs in Izmir and in um, Mumbai. Um, and on addition, uh, IARC has signed memoranda of agreement or, um, so that the, um, the Chinese, the Korean, the Japanese, and the Thai cancer research centers, the institutes and uh, can actually act as collaborating centers and do a lot of the footwork in order to organize the, uh, the training, etc. So hopefully this will expand. The, the only problem is I have worked in Japan, I have worked in Thailand, I have worked in, uh, in Korea, and I have um, the colleagues, very good friends in all of those countries, but they tend not to work. I was worked also in China, and they tend to work 
themselves and want to focus on their own efforts rather than um, so I hope that you as you're in your pubs will be able to coordinate this um, as I said we have very good registries in India in China it's already up and running whether they will con whether they will contribute is a question that is open next slide please so we in the APOCP try to um, do as much as we could, you know, missing two, two maps there, uh, two, two um, um, uh, basically information about a, a um, supplement which we used for APOCP with Max Parkin in 2000, basically to show the situation of cancer registration at the time, and another one in 2010 that I did together with a lot of other um, scientists across um, uh, Asia. Um, so we did try to, we have tried to um, focus more attention on cancer registration in line with the um, Yasmin Bergri's advice that we should publish in order to have the basically hard copy, or even if it's a, so in in print so that um, we can show the, the data can be shown to the governments and you can see here the, the what is been um, what is being saved on this slide is that we have countries like for example kazakhstan we have been active for many years we have 60 percent or two-thirds of the papers um that have been published there are only 10 but uh, but or, or 12 in total but two-thirds were published in the APTACP because of our interaction with the people there this is the same for Southeast Asia, basically, you can see the percentages. They're relatively high for all of the countries, but not, of course, for places like Japan and Japan, because they can publish in high-quality journals elsewhere. But that's what we have been trying to do, trying to uh, promote cancer registration publication so that the evidence is there to show to the governments. Next slide, please. So I'm, I'm coming to where I very slowly. Okay, and unfortunately, we've lost again the, um, uh, we produced the APJCP together with Max, we produced a, um, another supplement for the International Association of Cancer Registries, a history of uh, the International Association. Um, um, and, and this was handed out to uh, uh, the uh, participants of the meeting 2010 Yokohama, where I enjoyed uh, discussions with uh, with Freddie and a lot of other people, and where the first um, major push towards an Asian um, uh, network um, was basically put under the floor. However, it was squashed because there were competing um, candidates for the home of this um, network and therefore it was put on hold. Um, the next thing we have is in 2014 where we all got together in Thailand um, and again we tried to get it going. Um, 2018, this is another four years later, then we had a very much more successful meeting when it was decided that there would be a cancer and an Asian network set up within IAR. But as Freddie will tell you, that has not been the case because for of whatever reasons there are of course many many um, financial um, concerns and um, other resources but nevertheless we need to continue to focus on this next slide please and we need to get all of the go the stakeholders here on the left hand side um, acting together whether it be IARC, whether it be WHO whether it be the International Association of Cancer Registries and uh, other big research organizations we need to work together but unfortunately, my experience with the APOCP, with the Eurasian Institute, and also with ISEP, um, with the um, ASEAN, um, means that um, we still need to have a, um, a funding mechanism. We need to somehow uh, manage to produce uh, um, more evidence, uh, which will uh, persuade all of the governments in Asia that cancer registration is of great importance for their Ministries of Health. Thank you very much. Next slide is just to say thank you. Ah, oh, that was the one that we had. That's it. Anyway, we've done that already.